Hi Dandelions! I'm back to the business. Are you ready to dive back to Slavic folklore? Last time, in my previous top 10 episode, we discovered magical artifacts that you can find in Slavic tales. Now, since you know what to search for, it's time to find out whom you're going to meet on your journey. In this episode, I talk about top 10 magical creatures, species of all kind that you are likely to meet in Slavic tales. However, before we start, I have a few housekeeping things to say. First of all, I want to thank those who supplied me with tea on Buy Me a Coffee. The day is always better with tea. Thank you for your support, Dandelions. Also, I would like to introduce you my fellow creator, Mythology Unveiled, who is in charge of video editing in this episode. Make sure to give him warm welcome at our channel and to check out his channel after you finish watching this episode. What can be better than dragging innocent souls into the world of Slavic mythology? Hello and special collab on Messiah and Mythology channel if you are thirsty for something spooky but already have watched The Nightmare Before Christmas like a couple of hundred times. Pew pew! That should be it for now. We are ready to start the second round of the top 10. The Golden Fish Zalataya Rybka The first in our magical creatures list is the Golden Fish. The golden fish is a fish that is able to make your wishes come true. It is a character of Western Slavs folklore that was recorded by Alexander Pushkin. Unlike the Middle Eastern gene, the golden fish doesn't play guardic phone with people's wishes. It gives you exactly what you ask for. For example, if I would wish 1000 subscribers on my channel, you would subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. Let's see if my wishes will come true despite the fact that I didn't catch the golden fish. The golden fish has a human voice and is able to casually communicate with people. Catching this creature is many people's dream because the golden fish will offer you any dream come true for her redemption. However, there are certain terms when you are making a wish. The golden fish is easily able to take away everything that she granted to a human. In the tale of the fisherman and the golden fish by Alexander Pushkin, the fisherman got incredibly lucky and caught the golden fish. It offered him the redemption fee, but the fisherman was kind and just let it go. Guess how happy his wife was when she figured out that he lost the opportunity of his life. She sent him back to the seashore to ask the golden fish for a new wash tub. When the wish was fulfilled, she demanded to ask for a new house, then for a noble title, then to become a queen. The last straw was when the golden fish was asked to make the fisherman's wife an underwater queen and the supervisor of the golden fish. In the end of the tale, fisherman's wife ended up with a broken wash tub that she had at the beginning of the story. The closing scene of the tale, aka ending up with a broken wash tub, became an idiom in Russian, similar to the English idiom to be left in the dust, meaning to end up with nothing. Remember, don't mess with your magical creature when you make a wish. The next in the list is a soft and fluffy cat Bayun. But don't let his cuteness to confuse you. Bayun has an iron claws, after which your sofa won't survive. This creature can effortlessly break an iron cup. Bayun is an intelligent cat, a storyteller, a wizard who is able to mesmerize people with his pure voice. Russian verb Bayukat means to put asleep and this is what this cat does for a living. Those who get attempted by Bayun's singing and stories will become Bayun's dinner. But those who don't get healed from his songs. Which isn't far from the reality. Cats purr at the frequency of 25 to 150 Hz, which helps people to recover faster. At the same time, different frequency can seriously injure human's body. Still. Many characters in tales try to capture this magical cat despite the danger. Bayun, as any respectable cat, dominates the rest. Bayun sits in far, far away land, on an oak or a pillar or any other height, quietly observing travelers in a lifeless forest. In the tale about Vasilisa the Beautiful, Bayun lives at Baba Yaga's place. Usually his habitat is the border between the human world and the underworld. Modern sources state that Bayun is a huge animal, but the tale Padi to Dani Znaya Kuda – Go I know not whither, fetch I know not what – clearly indicates his size. In the tale Bayun jumps on the main hero Andrei's head. 
If Bayun was bigger than a regular cat, he wouldn't be able to use a human head as a personal seat. Anyway, cats always have a special place in Slavic community, since they protected Slavic household's food from mice. Slavs would always let a house cat inside of the cradle to help the baby to have a good sleep. Tell them about dreams and wishes. The magical shuka is here to make them come true. The magical shuka. Волшебная щука. The magical shuka, or the magical northern pike, is a golden fish winter colleague. This fish is native to East European region and, according to many tales, it can make your wish come true. This creepy-looking fish with sharp teeth is a significant part of Slavic cuisine and a powerful creature. The magical shuka is able to communicate with humans by regular speech like most magical creatures. This fish is one of the main characters in a popular tale about a peasant boy Yemeda. There are so many versions of this story that varies to region to region. I will say only the overall plot. There is a peasant boy Yemelia, who is described as lazy but kind. I would question the statement, you will understand later why. He catches the magical shuka, and the creature gives him the unlimited wishes come true package as a reward for letting her go. It was enough to tell Pashuchimo Vilenu Pa Memu and to list a wish, and it would appear. Another person would ask for gold. But peasant boy Emilia asked for smart household tools that would do house chores instead of him. Greedy Tsari heard about this miracle and wanted to use it to his advantage. Tsarevna Maria immediately falls in love with Emilia after he pronounces по щучьему велению, по моему хотению, while she was engaged with someone else. The fact that Tsarevna is under the magical spell throws me off. Technically, she remains under the spell aka in love until the rest of her life. We will come back to gems and tales like this one later. Now my mental health needs wonder. Chuda Yuda A noun Chuda in Russian means a wonder. A word Yuda doesn't exist separately from the phrase in day-to-day -day language. Chuda Yuda is an ancient creature with no clear origin, description or character traits. Alexander Afanasyev had a theory that Chuda Yuda is related to the Sea King and other powerful sea overlords. Sometimes it is described as a apprentice like creature with multiple heads, please don't mistake it with Megarinich. Sometimes as a hybrid, for instance, it was mentioned that Chudayuda has a tail. This creature is mostly can be found as an antagonist in tales, a part of a dangerous quest. However, in the tale The Little Humbugged Horse, Chudayuda is a whale with an island on the back neutral character. Also, phrase Chuda Yuda is used to describe something wonderful or odd. In short, if you met a creature that you don't know how to describe, you met Chuda Yuda. The Grey Wolf Siri Wolk It's the turn of our furry friend. Disclaimer, do not take it to the shady fandom road. Do not. The Grey Wolf is often referred in Slavic tales as the Wolf. This character has many sides. For example, in some tales he is portrayed as a dangerous, powerful, but dumb and arrogant creature with way too much simplicity. On another hand, in the most popular tale, Ivan Tsarevich and the Grey Wolf, the Grey Wolf is portrayed as a wise creature, smart, brave and a bit cunning. His ability to understand human and animal languages lets him to easily get around. It is worth to mention that his advices got Ivan out of trouble many times if he listened to them, of course. Who needs a Ferrari when you have a grey wolf as a friend? This creature runs faster than wind and doesn't mind to give you a ride on his back. Also, the grey wolf is able to transform into another animal or a human. In the tale Ivan Tsarevich and the grey wolf, the grey wolf becomes the helper of Ivan, trying to make up for the eating Ivan's horse. Despite the freedom-loving character, the Grey Wolf is a loyal companion and obviously more experienced, unlike one with his inability to resist his own desires. This guy definitely wouldn't survive on his own. I mean, the Grey Wolf was able to bring Ivan back to life with the Water of Life after Ivan's brother decided to get rid of him. Keep in mind, the Grey Wolf is a real lone wolf and will be gone once his moral debt is paid off. Before we start to get more flashbacks to the top 10 magical artifacts episode, I would like to introduce you dandelions to the next creature, Sirin. 
Сирин. Птица Сирин. Сирин is a mythical creature, half woman, half bird, or sometimes a bird with woman's head and with beautiful voice. Сирин lives in Eri, Slavic heaven, and sometimes visits the human world. To recap the knowledge about Slavic cosmology structure, visit my video Worlds Yaf, Naf, and Prav. Unlike the other magical birds, Sirin brings sadness to people. Seeing her, and especially hearing her, is not a good sign. The bird Sirin has sisters, such as the bird of happiness Alkanost, who mourns with the song of fallen warriors and takes their soul to heaven, and the prophetic bird Gamayun, whom I won't cover this episode. Sirin is the messenger of the underworld, Naf. Her divine songs can easily make a person to forget about all worries and to lure to the underworld. It is important to make loud noise to scare Sirin away before she starts to sing. Otherwise, you are likely to be trapped in the underworld. Because of her connection to the underworld, Sirin is able to grant sacred knowledge to commoners. In one tale, a lumberjack saved a child of Sirin. Sirin, as a gesture of gratitude, promised to make his dream to come true. The lumberjack asked for the ability to see something that is brighter than light and something he haven't seen before in the human world. Sirin was able to make his wish to come true. The lumberjack became blind and was able to see a spirit who comes to take people's souls to the afterlife. During the Apple Feast of the Savior or Yablochny Spas, Sirin and her sister come to the human world to sing in the apple garden and to bless apples. First comes Sirin that cries about people who had wrong life. And then comes Alkanost with happy song and blesses fruits by shaking the dew from her wings. Bird sisters are usually depicted together in art as a representation of three parts of one, three worlds, Yav, Naf and Prav. With this in mind, we are passing the spotlight to their bird colleague, the firebird. The firebird. Жар птица. The brightest creature in the Slavic folklore. The lover and the stealer of the golden apples. The firebird, if you remember from the top 10 magical artifacts video, has a few wonders in her feathers. The feather of the firebird gives luck and happiness to its owner. The firebird itself is a beautiful peacock-looking bird that lives in Eri in the golden cage, sings all day long and barely pays attention to the outside world, just like the rich people. Touching the golden feather of the firebird will result in third degree burn, but the flame from the feather itself is harmless. The firebird is immortal, and even Kashi the deadliest ones tried to possess this bird because of its magical healing abilities, and for financial reasons. When the firebird sings, pearls come out of her mouth. Also, cooled feather of the firebird becomes gold. Generally, the firebird isn't aggressive, so you don't need to know a life hack how to defend yourself around it. The only tip is to wear oven mitts if you plan to touch it. This bird is a piece of sun. Sivka Burka The next in the line is Sivka Burka. Sivka Burka is a loyal friend and a horse of a bagatir, a Slavic warrior. The full name of the horse, Sivka Burka Vesia Kaurka, formed from many adjectives. Part Sivka is a form of an old adjective Sivi, which means white or pale pastel grey. Burka comes from a word Buri, which is adjective, means russet color. Kaurka is formed from an adjective Kauri, which is light brown color. The name of the horse literally means white russet light brown colored horse, and this is how this creature is usually depicted in art. Adjective Vishi in Russian means prophetic, and it refers to Sivka Burka's ability to see the future. Sivka Burka is a powerful ally to have. According to the tales, Sivka Burka has smoke coming out of the ears and the flame is blazing from its mouth. The horse has incredible speed and strength. Sivka Burka is the creature of the underworld, because Slavs considered horses a guide to the realm of the dead. In order to call on Sivka Burka from the underworld, a person has to tell Sivka Burka Vishi Kayurka, Stan передо мной как лист перед травой, which translates to Sivka Burka, the prophetic Kayurka, stand before me like a leaf before the grass. There are multiple tales with this creature. In one tale, the youngest brother Ivan catches Sivka Burka who destroys the wheat field. As a redemption fee, the horse offers Ivan to become his servant. 
In another tale, Ivan inherits the horse from his deceased father, since he was the only one from three brothers who took care of the father's grave. In both tales there is a strength competition, and the winner will marry Tsar's daughter, Tsarevna. In both versions Sivka Burka with Ivan jumps high enough to reach Tsarevna in her tower. The young couple got engaged, and they lived happily ever after. Just like me when I will publish this episode. The Little Humpback Horse Konyok Garbunok Despite the small size, Konyok Garbunok, or the little humpbacked horse, is a quite capable creature. Sometimes people mistake Sivka Burka with the little humpbacked horse, but they are two different creatures. One is a big horse, and another one is little funny looking with disproportionately big ears and two humps. But like Sivka Burka, the little humpbacked horse is a loyal friend and powerful ally who races faster than wind across the sky. The little fellow also speaks human language, has a knowledge of human and other worlds, as well as high intuition to spot evil people. And a small note, the little humpbacked horse will be willing to serve only a person with kind heart. He isn't going to stick around or support someone mean. According to the tale The Little Humpbacked Horse that Petr Yeshov wrote based on Siberian folklore in 1834, the little humpbacked horse was sent to Ivan as a friend and helper for Ivan's kind deed of letting a caged golden-haired mare go. The golden-haired mare gave her offspring to Ivan, two regular horses and the little humpbacked horse, with the advice to never sell the little one. Since then, the little humpbacked horse is here for Ivan no matter what. Together, they went to catch the firebird that I talked about earlier to find the king princess, her ring, and many other adventures. Tsikavats Would you like to have your wish come true without catching the golden fish or the magical shuka? Would you also like to be able casually chat with your beloved pet? There are many ways to make your dreams come true in Slavic world. Make yourself Tsikavats! Last but not least for our today's episode is a Serbian creature Tsikavats and Katya who left her comfortable zone of East Slavic mythology to make this episode. Tsikavats is an avian creature that has a long beak with a pelican-like sack. In order to make Tsikavats, you have to take an egg from a black hen. Then a woman must hold the egg under her armpit for 40 days. During this time the woman must not confess, cut her nails, wash her face or pray. Good luck finding a woman who will subscribe to that! I would never sacrifice my skincare routine. After 40 days, all I can say is congratulations, your Tsikovats is ready! By the way, Tsikovats has a habit of sucking the honey and milk from other people's hives and cows and deliver it to its owner. Your neighbors won't be happy about that. Be prepared to fight with your neighbors. I hope your wish worth it. Woo, that was quite a trip! Are you still here? Because we are to come back to the reality. Which creature from Slavic fairy tales would you like to meet in person or befriend? Let me know in the comments. I'm in quarantine. It took me three days to record the audio for this episode. I need some tea. The next top 10 episode will be dedicated to top 10 places that you are likely to visit in Slavic tales, as well as loads of cultural and historical content that I prepared for you during September but it needs time to be processed. Hit that subscribe button to be informed about the future episodes and stay warm, dandelions. I created the Instagram account, by the way.